Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 38 here on season two. And today we are getting into should I be more conservative? And I'm not talking about politics. This question comes from Joseph Petit or P Petit. I don't know. Anyways, the last name is, is there. It's just, it's somewhere in the words that I just said. He asked, any advice for pe for with people with acorns and, or stash? Would you change acorns to more conservative stashed to more of park my cash or slow and steady? That's a great question. Anyway, so real quick, these videos are for educational purposes only, not to be taken as financial advice. You are responsible for your own assets and to protect those assets. So do your due diligence and research before you buy. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. So personally, Personally, this year, I am looking to add more bonds to both my Acorns account and my Stash account. Acorns, like I've been saying in March, I will switch from a moderately aggressive account to a moderate account, thus putting exposing my portfolio to 40% into bond type ETFs. On Stash, I plan after I purchase every single ETF, so I've got like five more. So in the next, probably by April, I'll be adding a lot of my money into Park My Cash, turning that up to 25%. So I'll be 25% exposed only to Park My Cash. And, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I've always felt like I needed to be more exposed to bonds, but because of the way that the stock market has been working the last like two years and just continues to climb and climb and climb and climb, I was like, it's no big deal. Like, I'll just continue to invest a lot into stocks and it should work out. However, as I started to read more books and started to do a lot more research, I, f I brought in the freaking ruler today. Like, well, not even a ruler, it's a, it's a level. Like, what the heck? Any Sorry, like squirrel, forgot where I was. So with reading a whole bunch of different books and, and just kind of reading articles and, and things discussing being exposed to bonds and the benefits of that, I, I kind of came to this conclusion about November, October of last year that I needed to expose both both of my accounts, actually all three of my accounts more into the bond ETFs or bonds in general. And when I, when I came upon 2018, I was like, all right, this is the year that we're gonna do it. And so that's what I'm doing this year. I know that it's gonna hurt my upside just because I'll be more exposed into some less volatile bond type ETFs. But Overall, I think it's it's the best decision that I could make for all three of my accounts. This year will be the year that I execute that. However, like advice for your account, well, I can't just give you advice. I can tell you what I would do. My personal opinion is I wouldn't, if I was my account, I wouldn't sell any ETFs or stocks that I already have in an account. What I would do is I would just start, for instance, if I was making like a $20 weekly deposit, I would just take that instead of putting it all into stocks, I would allocate maybe half or all of it into park my cash up until a certain percentage. And that has to be decided by you. For me, I personally feel anywhere between 25 to 75% into bonds is great. For you, you might think that, hey, 10% exposed to bonds is, is good for you. I can't make that decision for you. That has to be something that, that is left up to you to decide. Bonds are one of those things that, that nobody really talks about or thinks about up until the point that we have a correction or we have some red days in the market. And, and it's, and it's not really like when the money gets shaky, people are like, okay, like what's up? What's the, what's the deal with bonds? Like how good are bonds? Should I be investing in bonds? I think that that's something that needs to be done prior to the money getting shaky. But obviously with new investors and, and just investing lately, it's kind of like one of those things you kind of got caught in this correctional period. This just money shaking period is something that look into, look into, look into, look, look into investing into bonds, especially exposing your, your account or portfolio a little bit to the bond type ETFs. The money will be more safe there and less volatile than if you were to put it into like stock ETFs. I'll say this though, if the recent like downturn, the recent weeks in, in the market have been like concerning, hard for you to handle, upsetting the stomach, you feel like you should sell, you're getting emotional, you're more upset than you usually were or whatever it is, uh, then you might either be overly investing your cash so you might be investing more than you actually can afford to lose or you need to start allocating or exposing that account more to bonds. But that's something that you have to assess yourself. I can't sit here and tell you, expose yourself this much to bonds. I think that exposing to bonds is a good idea, but again, that's up to you to make the decision ultimately. Anyways, we'll go ahead and leave it right there. Let's go ahead and dive into the question of the day, which is what's the future of dating? I don't even know what this means. Like we got Christian Mingle, we got like match.com, Tinder, 
I don't know. I don't know if that was like, how will dating look in the future? Or like, will we be dating like artificial intelligence or what will it be? Personally, I think that we will always be in this area of like, we date humans. I think that we'll obviously have outliers that go and date aid artificial intelligence on the other end like maybe people start dating their dogs I don't, I don't i don't really know if that's what the question was even about but um maybe we'll go back to like doing like advertisements in the newspaper or something like that i don't know that would be crazy anyways like i'll say if you have any question regarding stash acorns robin hood as well as general investing guys business etsy coaching post those questions down below don't forget to subscribe up here and check out my stash recap january edition check out this other video right here and as always thank you for watching i really appreciate it